Hello everyone, this is Scan City Academy. In the previous lecture, we learned how to find the equivalent resistance of a short circuit. In today's video, we are going to focus more on delta star transformation. We learned earlier that to find the equivalent resistance for a given circuit, you need to know the type of connection between any two resistors at a time, whether they are connected in series or in parallel, and from that, you will be able to calculate or find the equivalent resistance for that particular circuit. However, such is not the case at all times. At certain instances, you may have circuits where no two resistors can be identified to be in either series or in parallel. Now let's consider this circuit. Can you identify any two resistors in series with each other? The answer is no. This is because there exists a node between any two resistors. Now let's focus on the resistors. Between R1 and R2, we can see a node. Between R1 and R3, we can as well see a node. Between R2 and R3, there is a node. And between R4 and R5, we also have a node here. Since there exists a node between any two resistors, they cannot be in series with each other. So R1 cannot be in series with R2, neither can R2 be in series with R3, and the same applies to R4 and R5. Interestingly, no two resistors can as well be in parallel. This is because it is not possible to go through a loop without passing through only two resistors. For example, you may have to go through three resistors if you want to select this loop. The same applies to this particular loop. You may have to go through R3, R4, and R5. Since it is not possible to go through the loop without passing through only two resistors, the resistors here cannot be in parallel. In situations where resistors cannot be identified to be in series or in parallel, it will be necessary to introduce a new technique for combining these resistors. This is referred to as the delta star or the star delta transformation. This technique considers a combination of only three resistors at a time. Notice that for two resistors to be in parallel, then you need to go through an entire loop without passing through any other circuit element except the two resistors. However, for this particular loop, you can go through a third circuit element which is the source voltage. In view of that, the two resistors R2 and R4 cannot be in parallel. Now let's talk about delta networks or delta connections. Three resistors are said to be in delta if the three resistors are connected end to end, like we see here. Notice that these two arrangements are all delta connections. Sometimes you may see this, and other times you may see this. Since the resistors are connected end to end, then we have a delta connection. Notice that a delta network or a delta connection is usually represented by a triangle or a pie shape. Now let's move ahead and talk about a star connection or a star network. Three resistors are said to be in star when all the three resistors have a common point of connection. Since all the three resistors RA, RB, and RC have a common point of connection, then we have a star network. Sometimes it is more convenient to work with a star network in a place where the circuit contains a delta configuration. This is why delta star transformation is very necessary. With this technique, resistors in delta can be transformed to star and vice versa. Some resistors will be in series or parallel, making it easier to find the equivalent resistance for a given circuit. Notice that a star connection or a star network may be represented by a Y shape or a T shape. So now let's discuss how to convert a delta network to a star network and vice versa. The circuit we see here is made up of both delta and star networks. 
the inner connection is the star network and the outer connection is the delta network now let's do the conversion let's see how we can convert from delta to star what this primarily means is that we know the values for r1 r2 and then r3 and then we want to find the values for ra rb and then rc now to find the value for ra rb and rc ra is going to be r1 multiplied by r2 divided by r1 plus r2 plus r3 what we realize here is that if you want to convert from delta to star and you select a resistor let's say ra then ra is going to be the product of the opposite resistors which are r1 and then r2 divided by the sum of the outer resistors that is r1 r2 and r3 so for rb rb is going to be r2 multiplied by r3 divided by the sum of the outer resistors which are r1 r2 and then r3 And then RC is going to be R1 multiplied by R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Now how do we convert from star to delta? This time it means that we know the values for RA, RB and then RC and then we want to find the values for R1, R2 and then R3. In converting from star to delta we should consider each triangle at a time. We have three triangles, one, two, and then three. However, we need to consider each triangle at a time. Since we are interested in the resistors at the base of each triangle, then it's going to be the sum of the other sides plus their product divided by the other resistor outside the triangle. So let's see if you want to find for R1, then it's going to be RA plus RC plus the product of RA and RC divided by RB. So we can write that here. So it's going to be RA plus RC plus RA and then RC divided by RB, which is the resistor outside the triangle. Okay, outside the triangle we are considering. Now for R2, it's going to be RA plus RB plus the product of RA and RB divided by the resistor on the outside of the triangle we are considering which is RC and then R3 is also equal to RB plus RC plus RB multiplied by RC divided by RE. So using this formula, you can convert from star to delta. You don't need to memorize all these formulas. However, regular practice is necessary to keep all these in memory. Now let's solve some real examples. Let's say we want to find the total resistance for this particular circuit. To find the total resistance, we need to check if the resistors are either connected in series or in parallel. However, for this particular circuit, no two resistors are connected in series. This is because we can find nodes between them. Now, for example, let's say between the 6 ohm resistor and the 2 ohm resistor, we can find a node here. Between this 2 ohm resistor and then this 2 ohm resistor, we can as well find a node here. The same applies to between these 2 and then the 6 ohm resistor, and then between this 6 ohm resistor and then this 2 ohm resistor. How about they being connected in parallel? For two resistors to be connected in parallel, then you need to go through a particular loop without passing through any other circuit element except the two resistors. However, if you want to go through this loop, then we need to pass through three circuit elements which are the 6 ohm resistor, the 2 ohm resistor, and then this 2 ohm resistor. The same applies to this particular loop and then this particular loop. Since we have no two resistors in either series or parallel, then we need to resort to the delta star transformation. The three two ohm resistors 
have a common connection point which represent a star network so we are going to convert this to have a delta network so that we will have a resistor here another resistor here and then the third resistor here so let's represent these resistors by ra rb and then rc so ra is going to be this 2 ohm resistor plus this 2 ohm resistor plus the product of these two resistors divided by this resistor so it's going to be 2 plus 2 plus 2 times 2 divided by 2 now 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and then 2 times 2 is equal to 4 divided by 2 which is equal to 2 so we have ra to be equal to 6 ohms so for rb rb is going to be this resistor plus this resistor plus the product of these two resistors divided by this resistor so it's going to be 2 plus 2 plus 2 to bracket 2 divided by 2 which is the same as for ra so we are going to have rb to be equal to 6 ohms and then rc is also going to be 6 ohms so after converting from delta to star this is what you are going to have so this is our ra which is equal to 6 ohms this is rb which is equal to 6 ohms and then this is rc which is also equal to 6 ohms now these two resistors are connected in parallel because you can go through the entire loop without passing through any other circuit element except the two resistors the same applies to this particular loop so we can find the equivalent resistance for these two sets of parallel resistors and the equivalent resistance for two resistors connected in parallel is given by rt which is equal to r1 multiplied by r2 divided by r1 plus r2 so it's going to be 6 multiplied by 6 divided by 6 plus 6 now 6 times 6 is equal to 36 and then 6 plus 6 is equal to 12 now 12 goes into itself once and then into 36 3 times so rt is equal to 3 ohms so we can replace these two sets of parallel resistors with this 3 ohm resistor so the circuit is going to look like this this is the source voltage and then we have 3 ohms here and then another 3 ohms here and then we have RC here now this 3 ohm is the equivalent resistance for this and then this 3 ohm is the equivalent resistance for this now this 3 ohm resistor is in series with this 3 ohm resistor so their equivalence is going to be 3 plus 3 which is equal to 6 ohm so we are going to have this 6 ohm resistor in parallel with this 6 ohm resistor because we can go through the loop without passing through any other circuit element except the two 6 ohm resistors so their equivalence is going to be 6 times 6 divided by 6 plus 6 now 6 times 6 is equal to 36 and then 6 plus 6 is equal to 12 so RT is equal to 3 ohms so that is the equivalent resistance for the entire circuit